fans, in this video we're going to talk about the third reading strategy in this series, visualize. So when kids visualize what they're reading, it helps them to understand the story, which then leads them to be able to make deeper connections and later answer questions on the story. When we go over visualizing, we really want to help the kids to make a mental image. I always tell the students to make a movie in their head. Take it from 2D to 3D to 4D to as many definitions as they can. As the kids are visualizing, we want to activate all five senses. So can they see what they're reading? Do they hear the sounds that are going on in the store? Do they smell the smells and touch all of the things that the characters are touching? Can they taste what the characters are tasting? We want to engage all of our senses so that we can be fully engulfed in the text. Another thing to note with the kids, if at any point they are reading and their visual becomes a little murky or that movie in their brain goes blank, that is a good indicator that they don't understand what they're reading <clears throat> and that they need to stop, go back, and reread to make sure that they're understanding what they've read. To go over visualizing, I'm going to read an excerpt from The Chocolate Touch. And I'm going to model how I would visualize using my five senses while reading this. So, this is The Chocolate Touch by Patrick Skeen Catling. Pictures by Margot Apple. And I'm reading from chapter seven. This is a chapter book, which a lot of visualizing has to come from a chapter book because there aren't going to be as many pictures. So it's important for the children to develop their own visuals for the book. Chapter seven. All right, boys and girls, Miss Plimsoll said, it is almost time for lunch. Clear up your things. Paint pots, securely closed, brushes washed, painting sun pen, and laid out to dry, drawing boards stacked against the wall. Ah, there's the bell. Front row first, Timothy leading, then Robin, in single file, go. So I'm gonna pause here to show you what kind of visual I'm thinking of. So we're in school all the time, except for right now, and as I think about this, when it talks about the paint pots being securely closed and brushes washed, paintings being unpinned and laid out to dry, I'm thinking about them being in an art class. So in my mind, as I'm reading this, I'm picturing all of this paint and artwork. I can smell the paint. There's a very distinct smell to school paint. If you've ever been in an art class, you know the smell. I feel like all art rooms, they all sort of smell the same, like that paint smell, kind of the Crayola crayon smell. You smell all of that. So while I'm reading this, that's definitely what I'm smelling. As Miss Plinsel says, ah, there's the bell. Well, the bell goes off in our school as well. So I'm thinking, ding! There goes the school bell. First, front row first, Timothy leading, then Robin in single file. Go. So this is definitely something that I tell the kids all the time. We're going to line up in an orderly fashion. So as I read that, I'm imagining the kids getting up and getting in line. Now with that, I can hear the noise from the chairs. I can hear the noise from them chatting as they're getting into line. I can see the kids starting to figure out where their place is in line. As I'm reading this, I'm thinking about all that is going on around the characters. Let's keep going. John alone walks slowly in the throng, hurrying along the corridors to the school cafeteria. The school was proud of the cafeteria and the food served in it. The room was spacious and bright, with windows all the way along one side overlooking the playground and the playing fields beyond. The opposite side was wholly taken up by the shiny silver service counter. So 
but right here, this really sounds like LLCS. So as I'm reading this part, I see the bright windows, the bright walls. They're going in the cafeteria and anyone who's been in our school cafeteria knows the smells. You can smell when chef is making something really, really good. So this part makes my mouth water as I'm reading and I'm thinking about mm, when it's French fry day and those fries are coming up out of the fryer and you can smell it before you even get to the cafeteria. I'm thinking about all of those smells as I'm reading. Several boys and girls were already settled at tables by the time John took his place in the line. Enviously, John noticed a boy at a nearby table suck a straw dipped in milk bottle that was dull with frost. John could imagine the refreshing taste of cold, creamy milk. So right there, now I'm starting to think, mmm, the cold, creamy milk. I can taste it. I can feel it feel that it's giving me chills right now. I can almost imagine myself being this kid drinking ice cold milk. At another table, a group of girls were eating fat red cherries. John could almost feel the firm fruit on his tongue and the pleasure of biting through the tart, juicy pulp. The cherries must taste good. They must be thirst quenching. So right now I can see these cherries. I can feel them as if I was one of the girls who were biting on these cherries. And it really helps me to understand and create a good visual for what's going on in this book. As children are reading, it's important for them to create these visuals constantly to keep their minds thinking about why the characters are doing what they're doing. I'm going to stop reading here because I don't want to give away too much of this book. It is a great book. I'm probably going to do a read aloud for it at a later time. I think the kids would really enjoy it. But that is visualizing using the chocolate touch. <laughs>